Well, now I want to turn to uh, Eric uh, Hasselburn, uh, rocking farm toys for his S scale truck. Eric, welcome. You're muted. That evening, ever got uh, that's, that's better. <laughs> better. Um, we talked about, about 3, 3D printing, and this truck is entirely 3D printing. I don't know if you guys have much use for chrome parts, and I featured this, I think, in the very first video. I grabbed a few, but um, these just arrived, and I was kind of unwrapping them. I couldn't help myself uh, during kind of as we got going here. But this is a sample of electroplating. So if you have any use for chrome parts, this is exhaust that you would use on a diecast truck or is what I use it for. And this is a part that we made for a replacement. This is a replacement part for a diecast truck. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you could see that very well, but this is a grill and bumper air uh, for a truck like this. So this is a resin truck. This is an old resin thing for, uh, that I bought from a guy and he and I are teaming up because in the past, you always, you always had to buy a second vehicle just for the grill. Well, I said, why don't we just do that? And now we've, we've got it. And then just one other thing to geek out on you. These are clearance lights. Huh. Uh, go like on the top of a semi, yeah. uh, you know, visor where the driver sits right there on the top of the cab at the front. You see going down the road, you see all those lights going across the top of a cab or a sleeper. That's what these are for. And these measure, say, a millimeter and a half wide by, say, five millimeters long. And these are all electroplated. So these started out life in this kind of resin, which is just a generic introductory type resin. And this is its natural state. And then it goes through this process to make it chrome. And I've got 50, 60 different parts that I've made that have been chromed. So if you have any interest in that, I don't know if you railroaders get into chroming or anything, but backbox.com in China, that's where I'm getting it done. And it's super economical. So total game changer if you have a need for chrome parts. What's, so the, name, what's the name of the company again? F-A-C-F-O-X.com. F-A-C-F-O-X.com, thank you. Yeah. Game changer for me and what I'm doing in this uh, in my lab here. Okay, now, Where they, they, let me ask this: uh, Do they do the 3D printing for you as well as the plating, or just the plating? No, it's turnkey. You just send them. You you send them the file, or you just send them a picture. Or how do you start? You have to have your .stl file ahead of time. So okay. all of my designs. I, I own that intellectual property. It's on my laptop in my house. And then uh, you go to factbox.com. You have to go to manual quote. So you're going to ask them to consider a quote for you. And then you upload your files and then you'll go through, there's several drop down menus. It's fairly straightforward. And I think, I, and I have a video on YouTube as well. So, you know, you can go there, learn about it. Um, but you use the drop down menus and you can go to uh, 3D printing. Then you select what kind of resin you want. And this is like the first entry level resin. It's the most well priced resin there is on that website. And then you go, there's another drop down menu where you can select whether you want that item painted as an extra service, if you want it electroplated, et cetera. And then if you select electroplating, you can, there's another drop down menu. You can select gold, chrome, or black. Huh. And then fill out the quantity and you're off and running. I'll be darned. Never heard of it before. Thank you. It's a freaking game changer. Um, yeah, I get wheels chromed. I, a lot of things that I need chrome, that's where it's happening. Okay. Where we left off last week is um, we kind of began some assembly. I have one truck assembled I'm going to show you. And in the short time we have here, I'm just going, I think we can put this thing together quick. and then. Um, Kind of explain a little bit more. I did go ahead and put decals on this vehicle and uh, clear coated it. So let's get turned around. Okay. 
So tonight I'm working on a piece of denim just so I don't scratch anything. And uh, so I told you previously that the uh, last week that the frame was too short for this cabin for this uh, sleeper or for this service bed. And excuse me, just had a short interruption there. So I told you that the frame was too short. So I've cut the frame and now we'll add it and so it, everything will work correctly and it'll be long enough. Um, I went ahead and previously there were six washers that I used on this side of the wheel and the frame. And so I'm using six on the other side. And the reason for that is so the axle doesn't move slide side to side underneath that cab because that would look really ridiculous. I'm using just a little CA glue, just a splash here. To attach that, I'm not concerned if that CA glue gets into that washer because it will still allow the wheel to spin. And that's what I want. So the, I'm going to let that set there for a minute and then we'll attach the other one. These were shot with Molotow Chrome versus uh, having them electroplated. I would tell you, uh, just a side note about electroplating, if you choose that, I would tell you uh, in advance that you do lose just a little detail with the electroplating. These uh, grill lines right here were much more sharp before the electroplating because I got a prototype and I could do these wheels here and uh, I'm sure they'd turn out fine. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. So that's ready to go next. And I don't recall that I have to do that. Nope. If you're going to do one of these cabs, the bottom end of this frame right here, kind of not, it doesn't snap necessarily, but it rests right on the inside of that bumper right there. So it shoots against that bumper and toward the bottom side of the bumper. So it should be sitting right here above that lip. And then once you have your wheels together, you have everything squared, you can go ahead and glue your uh, cab down. Before I do that though, I forgot to mention your interior will rest right against this front part of the hood right there. And this one is wanting to kind of slide into the cab. As you can see, there's a little bit of gap there that should set, should set flush. Um, this one is just not behaving very well, no worries. Anyways, once you get a position where you want it, let me get that set right there. That's where I want that. Okay, and I'm using CA glue again, and I'm using, this is Instaset, which is just an accelerant for CA glue. I'm sure you're well aware of that, but I put it in a syringe just so I can be very deliberate on where I put it so it's not getting all over the place. That annoys me. Some guys, it doesn't seem to bother, but it sure seems to bother me. So I just use... And I buy these, I don't know what you guys, what the rules are in California, but you can buy, these are for veterinary use only. And you can buy those for a couple of bucks at like farm stores, farm and feed type stores. So that's where I'm getting mine. I got one just half a mile from the house. Out in my country, they're everywhere. I think I mentioned this last uh, in the first message, but where I live, if you ate a hamburger or a steak today or yesterday, there's a one in four chance it came from my country. That's what we do here. Okay, so we have our interior secured. We don't see any lines at the bottom. Looking good there. Uh, last time we did go ahead and then put the windscreen in. That was that was a load of fun. I'm dry fitting once more. And I'm eyeballing to make sure that this is square on the front or square on the cab, which it is. 
So we're just going to, let me see, I'm going to put that there again, just for reference again. I'm going to put glue on the frame right in front of this transmission and then back to about this cross member right here. And of course, I think I just put way more on than I need. Okay, I'm gonna let that chill once I get it square. Okay, and it's really warm in my shop right now because I haven't turned on the air conditioner. So that's gonna cure really, really quick. Next, I mentioned last time that the rear end may or may not sit properly with the bed. So you can see those wheels set up there in the fenders. Well, I don't like that look myself. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna shim this up to where the wheels are right above or right below that fender well. What I found was I needed a thin piece of styrene and you'll just have to experiment with the different shims that you might have access to, to get it where you want it. Uh, there's no right or wrong rules as far as I'm concerned on what you might use for this. Uh, these are all scrap pieces, leftovers of some sort or another from different projects I've had. And uh, I did one of these when I did the other one. This is exactly how I went about it. So I'm just stacking these up, little CA glue there to put them together. And like I said, this is just a scrap something. And it's good and flat, so it's going to work perfectly. Um, I did mention that I went ahead and put decals on this. The real service truck that I'm replicating has wheat decals on all these cabinet doors. And then it also has a different color wheat decal here on the, on the back door. And then there's the company logo and the city, which you really can't see. It's almost impossible to see that, but it's there. So the new owner will be thrilled. Now that I've got my shim in place, we'll go ahead and let me see, I almost forgot. Yep, that'll work. You may need to cut some of this frame off the back down. So this was actually attached to the other part of the frame and it's facing forward yet. So you don't want this to be, uh, you don't want it to run into the back of that bumper there and then offset your wheels. Okay. Okay, I want to square that up, make sure it's square in the fender well. And now that I look at it, I think it might need to be shaved just a hair. Excuse me just a minute. I'm not quite satisfied with what I got going on there. I have a disc sander in here and I tell guys all the time, they'll say, well, I don't have tools like you do, Eric. I said, tools just make it faster. Don't use that as, as an excuse not to make cool models. So I have a disc sander to do what I just did. I shaved what, three sixteenths off in a second or two. Okay, that's better. I like where we're going with that. That's much better. Okay, gonna check that out. Looking good there. Now I'm just going to let that chill, although it's a little off-centered. Let's put that right here. And then square it up one more time. My piece down here is sliding around a little bit. Okay. Um, Okay, just looking at my time. The other thing that I did not make that I was uh, busy messing with earlier this evening was a, a light bar. So here's what the truck looks like is where it should be at, or this is where I'm at on this one. So a light bar is gonna go right here. Well, I really couldn't make that until I had the 
service bed attached to the trailer because obviously I didn't know how long this would stick up over the cab. So I went ahead and made that. And this is just scrap styrene plastic uh, glued together with CA glue, nothing fancy. And the CA glue actually was looking kind of gnarly on the side of it like that. So I just put a little sandpaper to it like so, just to even up the sides. Like so. And then I'm also going to do that on the front real quick. Like that, just to put a little more angle and soften up any edges right there on the front side. You're not actually ever going to see it because it'll be up against the cab, but that little detail was important to me. So, what I will do next then. Now that these are done, I'll go ahead and wipe them down with rubbing alcohol, prime and paint them to match the service bed because that's those light bars are the same color as the service bed. And then I have 3D printed uh, lights that will go to the top of this. Uh, they're going to be a bit of a translucent plastic. And I got a buddy that's uh, making those for me. Okay, finally, we're here at the finish line almost. Now I mentioned last time that there, this is what I call the cheater's way to stretch a truck. And on my layout, this is exactly how you'd find one of these trucks because uh, it, it's just a lot faster to do it this way. However, if you want a super clean look, you can buy brass channel. This is channel that I have made. Uh, I have it. I have this cut at SNK Toy Truck or SNK Metals, SK Metals, and uh, this is quarter inch square tube. And I said, "Hey, just cut it in half." So I have channel iron or channel brass, and you can come in here and stretch this truck this way if that pleases you, and then you have a nice clean look underneath. Um, for my, for the people I serve, and for me my, myself personally. Once I set a truck on my layout, it never gets turned upside down unless a friend comes over and wants to look at it. So I don't, well, that's just not, that's not going well, is it? Let's put a little more down there. Square that up and then we'll get some Insta set in there and just knock that out. I think this happened last time and I forgot about it. Okay, now we'll just dribble a little of that underneath there and that will take care of it. It better take care of it or I'll be a liar. We don't want that. Yep, I think it's there, okay. That axle is just a little offset, not bad, but all right, and then finally, we're here at the finish line. We'll just glue those two together and off we go. So on mine, what I'll like to do is put, just drill a little bit of CA glue there on the front of that service bed, a little bit down the frame, like so. Put it together and we are golden. Now what I like to do is just look at this and make sure I got the same amount of bed on either side of the cab. And it's basically ready to roll. Um, it's eight o'clock, so I will, like, I will tidy up my comments uh, with the following. I went ahead and these two products right here come out of my store. These, are, these again are products that I had electroplated this fuel tank is a specific style of fuel tank that I needed. Um, so I designed that in Tinkercad and voila, here we go. I've got me a full step fuel tank, 150 gallon fuel tank. Uh, one thing I would caution you if you do electroplating, it's not a perfect process. And you can see right here how it's not as, as it is say right here. Look at that, that is gorgeous right there. That is so pretty. But on the back side right here where I had this wired up, um, and when I say wired up, 
I will print multiple parts on a wire right here. And this reduces my cost by putting many parts on a tree or a wire it reduces your part count. So you're being charged for one instead of 10. Mm. Anyway, um, right around with that wire attached, it didn't chrome quite as beautifully as it could have. And this is the top side of the tank. Luckily on most of the stuff I do, there might be a sleeper like this or, or a wide part that you're gonna hide all that. So if you choose to do electroplating, just know that that's a possibility. And then this is just a special kind of uh, Call it, it's a battery box with a step, and these are common on semis. And so uh, those were all 3D printed. Long story short, on the inside of this frame, there's a little lip right down here. You can see that. You can kind of grab it with your fingernail. I went ahead and put a shim inside there. And you can kind of see it through there. Put a shim inside there just to raise that up. So when I put these on, they don't pitch back. And then you've got a nice solid surface to glue to. And that is where I will leave that. Um, what is left to do as soon as I get these steps and once these two match, uh, the final step would be to put the detail work in here. This in real life is a window and this will be painted black. We have detail work with these latches, just like you would on model train or anything else. I believe I'd have to look. I think there's some cab lights that go across the top here. Um, this, I usually just put Molotow Chrome in for the headlights, as well as this grill area. And then I believe this bumper is also Chrome, which will also be Molotow. And an exhaust pipe needs to come off. I believe it's the, I don't recall if it's the passenger or driver's side. Other than that, um, these, these are basically done. So uh, next time uh, we'll just put the detail work on it and exhaust and these will be finished. Okay, um, just a second, sorry about that. There we go. All right, if there's any questions or comments, I'd be glad to answer. Anybody have any questions for yeah. Eric? Eric, which, uh, which Bob Smith super glue are you working? Is that the InstaSet? I'm using, uh, I, I've been using MaxCure Extra Thick for, for a long, long time. And then I use this. So I'm using these two together. That's what I use. All right, thanks. Love this stuff. And then I would tell you the only other glue in my shop is uh, this right here. And I use this primarily on anything clear where I don't want it. Like, I'm sure you guys are aware if you've used this, it, it'll fog. Okay. And you, yeah. yeah. So if I'm afraid of fogging, I will use this because this is water-based and it dries pretty clear. I mean, you could still see it. You could see the outline of it, but uh, it's pretty translucent, or at least I like it. Um, let me see if I have an example real quick. Uh, that's not it. Oh, right here. Okay, here's one I just finished. And you probably won't be able to see it very well, but all those lights and the air horns were attached with Formula 560, the canopy glue. And from here, you can kind of see an outline around those. And I was pretty generous with the canopy glue because I do not want these things falling off. This truck actually goes to Europe with a guy. Um, but it, you can see the outline of it, but from here, you really can't even see it. Like at this distance, you really got to look for it. it. Or at least my eyes have to look for it. Yeah, I use a canopy glue uh, on woods a lot too, if they're small pieces. Yeah, yeah, okay, well done, nice. I think we got to get Eric. you to make locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric, I've, had, I've had guys replicas of locomotives and well, Locomotives, motorcycles, pickups, cars, you name it. No, but, just locomotives. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eric, I have, uh, uh, I work in O scale, and uh, for my vehicles on my layout, I, as a kid, uh, I got a lot of these dinky toys from England. Mm -hmm. And the tires on them 
have in some cases deteriorated. Uh, what would you recommend? Uh, how could I uh, search around to find uh, replacement rubber tires for these dinky toys? Are they're cars, correct? They're cars and trucks. Yeah. Um. Gosh. Uh, there's there's I, you know, now this is agriculture and trucking more so than than automotive, but. I've been buying some tires from a guy. This website is Chucky's Pulling Tractors. And he makes a variety. They're mostly ag-related type tires. But um, I'm buying 164 scale pickup tires that are really nice. Um, I, I just have kind of started dabbling into offering pickup parts. And I bought some really nice tires from him. I don't know if he'll have the size you need or even the tread pattern that you're looking for. But, man, that's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. I mean, of course, you're always welcome to design it and print it and paint them black. That happens a lot. Could you, could you repeat that, that uh, name again? What was it? Chucky's? Chucky's pulling tractors. If you, if you just Google Chucky's pulling tractors or parts, you should find him. Um, the Chucky's is really obvious. Once you're there, you're gonna know you're there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, glad to help. Anybody that you're using and that you know about that specializes in in doing the 3D printing for tires or wheels, that kind of thing? Well, uh, not a, well, I'll take that back. Um, um, precision replicas. Um, Carson Bryan is the guy's name. Again, he specializes in agriculture. Yeah. He's making these things. They're, it's a very specialized tire out in ag industry called LSW. And I don't know who makes them, but they're LSW tires. They're really wide, wide, deep tread tires, flotation tires. And he's been printing some, some other automotive style tires for me in 164 scale. But today he just released, he's doing 32nd scale huh. uh, tires, you know, farm tires. And uh, they are a soft resin. They're not rubber, they're resin, but they're very pliable. And dang, they're, his stuff looks really cool. Huh. But he has the ability. And, and if he if he couldn't help you, I'm sure if any of you have a resin style printer, uh, he could guide you to where to find the stuff and, and at least how to do it. Yeah, I got you. Precisionreplicas.com. And you can find him on Facebook, too. Excuse me. Anybody else have any questions for Eric? Eric, thank you so very much. See you next week. Yep. Thanks. Thank you.